going on everybody we're back on part two of the c50 redo putting a new transmission in it new fuel line I already changed the oil and i ordered a new intercooler i've always had problems with the intercooler boots blowing off under boosts going down the highway i had an intercooler laying around that a friend of mine chad gave me when i was building a truck and it was out of a ford car and literally it was the last piece to go on top of the motor and I never liked the way it looked. It, I had it mocked up one way and then I had to flip it down. I think it was just suffocating. Uh, it would blow off under heavy load. And I had it reduced from three down to two and a half. So I ordered three inch boot kit, three inch intercooler intake, and I'm gonna put it down under the front bumper. So hopefully that, it's not here yet. Hopefully that shows up because I can't drive it until then. But I made a new fuel line. I got dash eight and I got fittings already from the fast. And I just got my fitting today. This will go in the pump, screw that in. So I'll use, uh, I'll use Teflon tape, the red stuff on all that. Maybe I'll use thread sealant. But anyways, that'll go in the pump. I don't know if any of you ever seen underneath the hood of this thing, but it was kind of, it was kind of busy. There was an intercooler laying here in the way. Didn't look that good. Hard to work on. Couldn't had to reach around it. Couldn't put oil in it without a crazy funnel. So all that's going away. This will flip back down. I'll turn that back down. And this here, it just runs straight down. Actually, it's almost a straight shot, literally. So should work out pretty good. I got the transmission up inside of it, but I ran into a little problem. Let's leave that loose till we get the cross member beat in. Let's go get the cross member. And the hammer. Bro, well, it's way out there. Oh, 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 yeah, it's a beautiful morning. It's a dirty old job doing this by yourself. Crossmember hole. Alright. Now we're gonna try to put this in without getting killed. Man, it was a struggle, but we got her in there. All right, we're moving right along. We're inside the cab, and we're gonna put some fluid in the old girl. Mark one thing off our list. There's the rag he stuck in it. He gave us good stuff. Royal Purple Max Gear 75W90. This is what the builder gave me. Uh, 
That's good stuff right there. Get over there and check for leaks. Just make sure the case isn't cracked or something weird. Everything looks good. Try to get some carpet in here. I don't think they make carpet for C50s, but we'll get some C10 carpet, trim it, do something with the tunnel, cover it ourselves. We've been wanting to get a sewing machine, experiment, learn. Can't learn if you ain't got one. two screwdrivers and push down on that go ahead and get that locked in okay i got to push down on this retainer and turn it at the same time yeah gone it's fighting me i think i'm just at the wrong angle trying to do it backwards Get in your home. Strike 10. Let's see if I can just manhandle it. See, you can't grab it. There it went. I gotta cut this out. Make room for the shifter. So I never finished the shifter, which I never finished four wheel drive, but I'm going to. So while we're here, we might as well do what we got to do for that. Which I know I'm going to trim the heck out of this floor to do that. So I'll probably save that for tomorrow. Got some new cut. Probably maybe try my new plasma cutter on that. Honestly, probably work pretty good. Cover up some stuff down there. And use the old lemon fab plasma cutter. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll catch you on that. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Sunday, and nobody's around right now. So I'm gonna try to knock some stuff out. One thing we're gonna work on this year a lot is this thing kind of been neglected i've had this there's the air compressor i had this truck before we started uh filming youtube content and built it and put it together over time stretched it put a flatbed on it stuff like that it's got a 454 in it with a turbo 400 and a 205 well the 400 has given it up it was squealing for a while and wouldn't pull i was driving it adjusting the thinking it was not in gear so i would adjust the shifter take it for a drive it just kept getting worse other than that everything was fine i was driving it around it goes pretty good since i stretched it i was trying to get it ironed out put some miles on it you know and one time i overheated the transmission because i had a cooler mounted up in the back with no fan and since then i put the cooler back up front and corrected those issues so the transmission gets plenty of cool air and i got braided lines and everything so right now i'm gonna jump under there because we're gonna go inside keep working on the c50 i'm almost done with that i thought i i'm gonna put no i left the fluid up at the house i got transmission fluid stuff uh the one thing the rear, U, the rear U joint don't fit the yoke very good. It never did. So I'm going to try to... I thought I had another U joint, but I must have left it in the black truck when I traded. It's always something when you're wheeling and dealing and turning and burning. But good thing about this turbo 400. Ouch! There's a screw. Put that in the hole. Good thing about this 400. Where you at? She's got a drain plug. Right there. Still gonna get dirty. Didn't bring a rag. Of course, it's all gonna turn. Oh, that's loose, boys. See what's in it. That's good looking fluid. 
So when I had Tim Crosley's truck here, the yellow K30, putting the motor in it, he said, you might want to pull the pan and just check underneath there. See if you see anything like the filter housing, the filter tube broke or something like that crazy. But I got a 400 208 coming. Doing some trading, getting a transmission transfer case for the uh, transmission for this. Supposedly transfer case for the van. So we'll see which one I use when I get them here. I'm not opposed to putting a 208 in this. I don't mind 208s. And I just drive this a little bit. I want to start driving the heck out of it. So I'm trying to fix these issues it's got. We're going to let that drain for a while. I'm going to set the wrench here with the plug. And just let it drain. Then I'll pull that, I'll push it up on the concrete where I can work on it a little bit better and pull that pan off. It's coming out unless the only way it's not coming out is if I pull that pan off and there's something real obvious right there that's broke to where it was starving for fluid. But the guy, Jordan, says that his transmission's good. It's in a Suburban and he's been driving it. So that's good. It's not, I'm just going to slap it in there. It's just got a, a stock 454 with an aluminum intake and 650 carb. It's just a driver. And we're wanting to put miles on it, take it places, and finish it. Finish the body up on it. It's kind of rust-free. i got to finish the rocker and cab corner, unbolt the bed, clean it, paint it. Bingo, bango. Nothing to it. But I forgot my fluid, so I'm going to run up to the house, and I'll be right back. All right, we're in the shop. The shop's a mess. That means I've been busy. So this intercooler here used to be up here, flat. And I'll tell you why. Story time. There's probably been a lot of people that's seen that and didn't understand what was going on. So when I was building this truck, it actually went together real fast, like faster than normal. I had the money. I built a Merlin bought the Model A. I took all the money, started building the truck. My buddy Chad gave me this. What it is, I don't know. He told me to come off a Ford car. So when I was building the truck, I had a radiator laying around that had come out of a Chevy van with an 8.1 in it. And I had saved that radiator, and it was in the pile, and I used it during the mock-up of building the truck. Well, when I went to put fluid in it, so I had this up here. Let me back up. This was up here because the hood has a serious indention in it for the original radiator is really tall. And I didn't want to use the original radiator in case anything ever happened. So I was trying to use the Chevy van radiator because they are readily available. And that's important when you're out on the road and you can pull in O'Reilly's and get another radiator by two o'clock. So that's what I did. I ordered a new radiator because the one I used for mock-up had a hole in it. I spent $500, got the warranty, brought it home. This wouldn't fit there anymore. It was like one inch taller, and I'm down there on the rubbers, and it's got a big old lip on it right here. So it, it's just a little bigger than the one I used for mock-up, even though it's for the same vehicle. It was a little bigger. You know, that's my luck. So, we were getting ready to go to Freedom Fest, or Merlin was going to be here the very next day. So, the only thing I could think to do, you're going to like this. I took the original mounts. Can't believe I'm even showing you this. I took the original mounts, cut them down, wrapped a pair of welding gloves around them, like that. Set that intercooler face down on that. This is ingenuity at its best. Set the intercooler on there like that. Ran my piping. But I had, I went from three inch, which is what the Cummins turbo in the intake is three inch. I stepped it down to two and a half because that's what this intercooler was. I plugged this hole here with a uh, prototypical fashion. I just used a bolt and that's right there. 
It worked. I mean, it worked so much that it would blow the boots off. I'm not, I don't feel like throwing it, but I'm not going to throw it because it was pretty good to us. Did its job. It did its job, is what you could say. So now I got on Spamazon. They ain't sponsored me yet, but they will. And I got this. This bad boy. And it's going to go right underneath the front bumper. We got to jump underneath to do a few things. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I got to put the, uh, I'm going to put my coveralls on, get dirty. I'm going to get under there and put the slate cylinder on. And I'm going to put the fluid in the transfer case. The transmission is topped off. Uh, really the only thing, I'm going to go buy a new U-joint in the morning and put it in there and see if it's any better than the one I got. I'm afraid my yoke is spread out. Which, that means, I don't know what that means. I'll have to find another yoke or I'll shim it. I'll do a Cory Wheat. I'll stick a penny in it and go. But that's where we're at. Three inch pipe kit. And that's all going in here. This is just a big, it's just a big clamp. C clamp, uh, ex, like an internal clamp on the back of here. You take the biggest pliers you got, loosen it. Turn that turbo, point that down. I've already got this bad boy. See, the chrome's going to get you home. I already got him aiming. And I got these tight. I got my oil here. Everything's good. We're down there. And then we're down there. The inner core is going to go up in here. I had this piece of metal laying around. Sometimes I come up with ideas in about 30 seconds. And we'll follow along. But this is going to go in there. I'm going to take this as one, one by one. Sixteenth wall. I'm going to drill holes in the top of it. A hole here and a hole there. And I'm going to use the bolts for that. I'm going to mount that up in here. Kind of at an angle some. We'll mock that all up and tack it. And then take the intercooler out. And I'll burn them in all the way. You can see I need to paint that anyway. And I found I'm missing a bolt under here. So I want to get that fixed while we're under here. And I only got two bolts to hold the bumper on. So I may just pull it off. Just take these two bolt bolts off here. I may just pull the bumper off and set it to the side. I don't know. But there's another cross member behind here, the Dodge cross member. You'll see when I take the bumper off. So I'm going to have to hang the intercooler down some under the bumper so it gets air. And you can see I already got a tube just kind of aiming. But I'm going to hang the intercooler because it, it can only go in one spot. And then we'll build the tubing to that. And you've already seen how I do it on the other truck. If I got to cut it, I'll show you how I crimp it. I don't have a bead roller or a TIG welder. I have a pair of Klein pliers, so here we go. We'll get my gloves back, at least. Listen, sometimes you're in a hurry, and you got to get that truck going, and you just got to come back and fix stuff. That's what we're doing now. Look at that. That's a really good glove. I'm short on lefts. Ugh, man. Oh yeah. Electric tape, welding glove, intercooler support. Nothing to it. After these messages is what they'd say on regular TV. They wouldn't be showing this. They'd bounce. We'll be right back. This would be a good time for one of them sponsors we ain't got. Any more beef stew? On the go, I just take those, throw them in the scrap pile. Look, those gloves, man. OJ Simpson. God dang, two lefts. No wonder I'm short. Left hand gloves. Well, they're back in rotation. All right, we're going to get under here, get dirty. Man, it's so dirty under here, I can't even tell you. Here's the fluid. We got the 
Valvoline. They didn't have royal purple. I was going to get royal purple. That's what's in the transmission. This is what they had. So this is what we're going to use. I'll be right back. inside here real quick just got called from Jennifer that she's wanting to go out to eat I'm not gonna argue with that we got to open up this floor a little bit for the transfer case shifter there's not enough I got to cut the floor out more we use the original boot so I kind of got it as a reference point and the screw holes in the floor and see how far back it goes Bust this out real quick and go get ready. So we pretty much got to take her all the way to the take her all the way to the back. We're gonna try out Lemon Fab plasma cutter here. All right, let's see if we, how she'll work, Dave. Very nice. All right, now we just make sure we ain't got a fire. Before we leave, all right, the old plasma cutter worked like a train, a dream charm. So that's what we're going in today's video. Tomorrow, I'm gonna put the drive shaft in it. Hope we finish up this intercooler setup. Now you can see my new uh, DC electrical one wire alternator. Call in. Now you can change your oil real easy. Get to everything. I might flip this guy around while I'm here, and then I'll call it a night. Now we can aim it down and out where it used to go. Kind of in stock location, they went down and out. So, here's your whirly gig. Let me get you, oh. get you a little closer. You can see the turbine wheel. And then this just clocks any which way you want it. That's going to be a little tricky getting that sucker to turn that quick. Probably leave this loose until we make that decision. Because I got to come out of there and turn down and out. But I got some 45s. Just don't have very many of those. But I may just need one. It may come out of there and turn. I may be able to 45 it short and come straight down to my intercooler. We'll see. That's why I'm going to leave this loose because it's kind of a pain to put on. I'll leave the pliers right here. I know I ain't going to start it. And uh, that's where we're going to end. I'm going to sweep this battery corrosion, corrosion out of here. Right here, got me a pile. Got me a god, and I ain't talking Godfather. That's a bad pile. Grab the shop vac, sweep that out real quick. Call it a night. Should be able to take this, cut it right there, kick it down out of there. Got pieces like this and this. We'll get out of there somehow. We'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. I'll finish up tomorrow. We'll start getting these bad boys installed. Look at there. There's my solution right there. Yep, see, kick that right off the turbo, straight down. Right to the intercooler, no problem. I'll get this bar installed tomorrow. We got the bumper off. Trim that down. Put that in there. Whatever whatever angle it likes is the angle we'll weld it in. May drill some holes through there, I'm not sure. See if that if that plasma cutter will cut that. I'll cut some holes in that sucker. I may see about cutting some holes in that bumper. But I don't know if it'll do that, but we'll catch you tomorrow. All right, it's Monday. 
It's beautiful out. Doors are open. Shop is filthy. Can't clean it till we get this done. So the U-joint fits in the rear end, a little sloppy. I went and bought a new U-joint, put it in there. It's a little sloppy too. It's been like that since I built it. I don't know if the yoke is wore out, opened up. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. So I'm gonna install what I got because I have plans of putting a Dana AD410 under it and redoing the brakes, just kind of slapping a new rear end under it. And uh, I'm not doing that today. Today I'm gonna put the drive shaft in that don't fit great. Cause that's what we do. We keep moving forward and got a little temporary action going here. Bumper will cover some of that. Some of it will be showing is what it is. So we're going to get that installed. Try to get that done. Got to do some work here. Kind of tighten it back up. She's been flopping, moving around. I don't know what to do there. We'll figure something out. If we got to put it back together somehow and weld it. It's kind of separating. But that's how it goes. So I'm going to jump under here. Install this drive shaft. Try to get something done. Here we are. Under the old beast. All right. Now we're put, putting in the rear U joint. Rear drive shaft. It's a whopping eight millimeter headed bolt. Thought that was funny. Good job, your hand. Little tiny, little tiny bolts. Look at it. Look how sloppy it is. Drove to Florida like that. We're just going to snug these down and grease it, tighten it down. I'm either going to have to buy a yoke. I might just buy me a yoke, see how good they fit. Just swap it. Probably the easiest thing to do. It's probably just wore out. Somebody might have had it loose. I know better than that. It's actually working better than I thought it would. Definitely got to address this, but for now. Now, I'm going to put a little magic in her. What else? All right. Carrier bearings bolted in. Cross members all bolted in. Got the exhaust hanger in. New gasket. Synthetic transfer case oil. Royal purple. 75, 140, I think. I'll have to look. New oil change. Um, what else? New fuel line. And now we gotta go up and finish up the intercooler. I think that does it. We gotta build a I'm gonna build a transfer case shifter while I'm here. Cause we haven't had one. And I need one. So we're gonna build one. Stay tuned. Alright, now we're moving up front. I made a simple bracket that just reaches across there. I'm going to weld it right there. I'm going to weld it right there. Then I'm going to make other brackets that go from these bolt holes in the front down and catch the bottom. But I'm going to get this top mount welded in. Because the lower mounts will just bolt in. And I can add those. Then I can put some kind of screen over it if I want. But i got to get these top welded in. 
then that'll hold it. I don't want to worry about it falling. And I can start running the, the lines to it. Then I can add other supports as I go. But at least this way I can get it running and driving. bumper only goes down so far and it'll get some air in there if not we'll map those little scoop or something we'll figure it out all right we're going to clean up some wiring get some stuff strapped up get these intercooler boots run and tighten the turbo back up we got a brand new battery for in here we'll get that in today and Finish up running this intercooler boot. Let's do that right now. All right. This is going to come out of the turbo and down under the truck. So the fun part. Doing that without poking a hole in your radiator. All right. Let's see if we can't get the C-clip on without freaking out. It's no problem at all. Now we've got our O-ring on there. Let's just pump this back on. Well, let's turn it a little bit. I know you can't see. There we go. A little bit on that stuff really adds up. It was so down there touching the metal. Turned it just a little bit. Everything's clear now. Let me show you what I was doing. So I got the boot leaving the engine bay. And I got that one leaving the engine bay. So that's good. Now we can access our AC compressor in the future. Because I want to add AC. I want to run vintage air, but I want to run it through the stock Dodge AC compressor. That way I don't have any funky monkey business going on. So that about wraps that up. I'm going to go grab the other battery and throw it in. That way I can just mark that off my list. All right. I've showed this before, but I'm going to show it again. Simple solution to a big problem. You, cut, you buy these kits and they got... Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So when you buy these kits, they have, they just send you bins. Like, what are you going to do with that? Well, there's parts of that you can use if you just need that and that. But when you cut it, you lose that bead, which holds the boot on under boost. I took a long 40, I just needed a short 45. So I had to cut it. That leaves me with a piece with no flare. What I have here, um, I'm not sure the brand of these. Klein makes them, Greenlee makes them. If you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, and you go in the electric department, they have uh, they have more of a pointy nose. I cut the nose off, and here's why. So we want the dimple to push up. I put it on there, and it creates its own little dimple. Now it's hard on your wrist and it takes a minute, but I'll tell you what else is hard on you is buying a bead roller and storing it and never using it. So it's just hard on your wrist. Only it's only hard on you when you're doing it. So it creates a real nice bead. It almost, I mean, it's man-made. It's not made in a roller, but you don't see this. It's hidden inside the boot. And this is aluminum. Now, when you get up to higher boost levels and your TIG weld, and obviously you're not going to be able to use this method. And uh, if you're running, if you're TIG welding stainless together, 
you probably just take welding your ridge on there. And if you're not, you should be. Because that's a good time to practice laying those dimes. Stacking those dimes. Whatever you want to call it. I mean, what just, what? I was talking for two minutes. Probably only took me three. Tools you already got. Simple method, little big problem, little fix. I'm gonna go back and clean up some of the spacing. Cause I want it to lay like I I want it to look like I stacked dimes on there. Now when I go when I get done, I go back and I use brake cleaner and a clean rag and I clean it all out. Get all those aluminum shavings in there because Turbo don't like them that much. It does hurt your wrist, I'll tell you that. It's hard to do left-handed, even though I'm strong left-handed, it's just awkward. Because I'm right-handed. Oh yeah, Amazon. A different truck pulled out of the neighbor's driveway and headed down the road. Then a different truck pulls in. Like, whatever happened to like you having like your Fred, your UPS driver. Hey, Fred, how you doing? And he brings you your package. Now we got just random people driving around all over, going to the neighbors, but not going to, it's just crazy to me. Seems like they waste a lot of gas. All right, look. Looks like a dimpled ass, but it's gonna be under the boot. No one's gonna see it. There you go. Tool tips from Tim. Bye. start shooting when we fire up the old camera. As soon as we push record, they start shooting every time. This is something new we've never tried before. We're filming the ending before I'm done with the video. Yeah, so here we are. Because here we are. <laughs> Two stars aligned. We're the stars. We aligned oh right now. Oh my gosh. So we got to film an ending. Transmission's in. Fluid's in. I just got to make a transfer case shifter because if I don't, I won't. And we got something in here. We don't know what it is. But we're I, gonna, I have a guess of what it is. But we're going to find out. What do you want to talk about real quick? I mean, we got the show coming up. Let's talk about that always. There's, uh, there's going to be so much fun stuff if you guys can make it for sure. We're going to have a cruise on Friday and Saturday. We're going to have live music Friday night and Saturday night after the show. Food trucks all weekend. Vendors, swap meet. Food. I'm, here's the only thing Dead I'm worried. Camping. Here's one thing I'm regretting about our car show. Oh. She got all the food vendors lined up, but I didn't negotiate any food credit into <laughs> the deal. We just told them they could set up and do their own thing, but I should at least got a $50 credit from each wagon because I want to eat like hell. I'm going to have to take a diet. I'm going to have to fast. You are? The days before. Like that Beard Meets Food guy? Yeah, Tim, Tim Meets with Meal Wagons. <laughs> we got a lot of uh, shirts for sale. Yep. Um... We haven't attached a great giveaway yet, but we're looking for that. That's coming. Um, we're working on lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff coming for you guys. We're heading to Spring Rod Run in April, so if you guys are going to be there for that, come say hi to us. We'll be around for sure. Whatever it is, it's big. Yeah, it's huge. I think I know what it is. I don't know for sure, but it's from Mike Hill. We always tell you guys about Mike Hill, Hill Job Graphics. He's honestly one of our biggest supporters, one of our biggest fans. We're a huge fan of all of his work. Jenny Junkin, he made me these shirts. Peace and grease. Turn around, show him the back, babe. Got the, got the old C50 on there. We've got, if you haven't bought one of them yet, you're missing out. Yeah, honestly. They're they're pretty decent. You're not going to win those giveaways anyway. <laughs> you might as well support us. Buy a t-shirt. So, get you a hat. Get you some t-shirts. We've got show shirts pre-sale on the website, too. So, peaceandgrease.com. We're always looking around for Sammy. He's always lingering. He's in the garage, I see. So let's open this. Let's see what Mike's in is from Hell Job Graphics. He's our number one sponsor, you guys. I think I know what it is. 
We've well, been, it's definitely a banner. We've been dying to open this for back a week. Back on, boys. That's going to be huge. Back it up, babe. You got to back up and let them see it. Now get up to where they could see it. Whoa. Look, we got B&B &B on there. We got. This is awesome. We got Miller's Campground, Swim Shop, Pink Kayak Candy, Silver Spring House, Mel's Auto Glass, Red Barn. Peace and Grease, Hill Job. Digital Dominance Graphics, Cincinnati Propane. That's a heck of a banner right there. All these people are supporting our show, you guys. So we want to say thanks to everybody that has showed us support and continues to. And we're going to have some awesome door prizes for you guys. Sweet trophies are already coming in. Yes. Trophies, uh, awards, door prizes. It'll be $15. Same day admission for one day, or you can get the $30 passes online now at eventbrite.com. That covers all three days, and you get tent camping. Kids included. are free. Kids are free. So we just want you guys to come have fun. Yep. <laughs> if we uh, if we ever uh, if we ever do make any profit after organizing and everything, someday we might build us this movie theater, drive-in movie theater. We have big dreams and yep. big goals for that. Beautiful day today. It's like 65 degrees out. We got big eclipse coming up, so pray for us. We're right in the path of destruction. There's, It's going to be like Woodstock around here. They're going to be in our field. They're going to be sitting on our poles. We're in the direct line for it, so are you yeah, guys going to watch the eclipse? We, we're... They're going to trash the place, all the tourists are. Oh it's going to be like Gatlinburg over they here. They've been telling us on the news to like prepare, prepare. for it. I'm Isn't prepping. that crazy? I dug a hole. I'm prepping. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, um... <laughs> Back of the truck tonight, I went and got parts for the rat rod, for the rat rod build-offs. Now we have all the axles. We have our motor in the house. We have transmission transfer case here. We're going to get more on that. Uh, start working on this. We're going to finish that. i got to get to work. <laughs> Buy a shirt. Come to our show. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Keep the comments coming. We appreciate you guys so much. We really do. We're Thanks a lot, Mike, for the sweet banner. Yes. Thank We're gonna you get so that. much, always. We'll get that on display. Probably in our house for our <laughs> podcast so we can be seen. All right. We'll see you guys later. See ya. I can show you around my first new, my first new campground. You gonna show them your campground? Yep. Here's the chimney of it. Oh, uh, that's a tree stump. Yeah, it's just a little chimney. See you later, guys. Bye.